Every book is an audio book if you read it out loud. We've all seen the pie hole setup and configuration videos, and sure, it's a fantastic little appliance that blocks ads, but today we want to talk about some of the other services that it incorporates and how it might fit into your home or office network. So when you sign up for internet with an internet service provider or ISP, they usually give you a single box and it does everything. It does it badly, but it takes care of your firewall. It takes care of your DHCP leases. It takes care of your DNS resolution. It takes care of often a little bit of your networking. It maybe has four ports in it and it'll usually take care of your Wi-Fi as an access point as well. Usually you want to break these services up into a number of different appliances. So let's start with your firewall. Normally you're going to have a completely separate router that handles all of your firewall and your network access. That's the first task out of the way. No problem. Next is DHCP. Most often it's not too bad if your router also handles your DHCP leases and reservations. Now we're going to move on to DNS. Most routers will do a good job of this as well, but this we're going to break out today into our pie hole. Piehole does a great job of blocking ads. It doesn't do a complete job of blocking ads. Most of you who have tried it will notice in YouTube, you'll still get your ads there. Uh, but websites will be much more stripped down. Piehole also does telemetry blocking. Now, whether that's Microsoft, Adobe, or others, uh, this would surprise you how much uh, is getting blocked when you start looking through the logs. So here's our Piehole dashboard. Let's see if we can see some of the stuff that's getting blocked. Okay, so here's some ads that are getting blocked, some double click stuff. SDK.split on Amazon telemetry. Stats.adobe gets blocked. Watson.telemetry.microsoft.com. We've got g.live.com. Analytics.query.yahoo.measurement.com. Incoming telemetry.mozilla.org. All of these telemetries get blocked out of the box by default. So yeah, it blocks ads, but the more important uh, service, in my opinion, is all of the telemetry stuff that gets blocked. Piehole will also let you set up whitelists and blacklists, so if you want to pick and choose what gets through or specific websites that get blocked, you can block them on a onesie twosie basis as well. NetAdmin's operating offices that have a big problem with uh, major social networking sites, for example, you could block out a social networking site by domain. The next thing that we use Piehole for is for our local custom DNS. So when we want to connect to Jeremiah's printer, we can just say Jeremiah's printer dot roguefocus dot com and our network here knows exactly how to do that. Let's show you how to set that up. Here's some of the local DNS that we've already got configured. So we can see here we've got uh, Jeremiah's printer is on 102. We've already got a DHCP reservation on that so it'll always be at 102. So we put in the domain that we would like to have there, the IP address that we'll be able to find it at. Click add and vap it up. Success. Now, when we want to go add a printer, we can just connect to jeremiahsprinter.roguefocus.com and we'll be able to print directly to his office. So when you want to remember where all those little IoT devices throughout your network are, it's easier to remember a custom DNS entry than it is their specific IP addresses, especially when you get to up to 20 and 30 of these devices. So that was local DNS. Now moving along to external DNS, Piehole's got you covered there too. You can configure all of the most common uh, DNS servers are there. Google OpenDNS, DNS Watch, Cloudflare. Cloudflare, of course, is a great uh, DNS service because it's an encrypted DNS service. You might notice we're using something that looks close to Cloudflare, but not quite. This is a fantastic service that Cloudflare offers. Everybody knows that they offer encrypted DNS, but did you know that they also offer uh, malware blocking and adult content filtering? Cloudflare introduced last year DNS for families. So 1.1.1.1 is going to be your standard encrypted DNS queries from Cloudflare. Malware blocking DNS 1.1.1.2 and 1002 will block uh, commonly known malware attempts. Malware and adult content filter 1.1.1.3 and 1003 gets you those filterings as well. So those are some extra 
uh, features that you can use. Now, of course, you don't need Pi Hole to use those features with uh, Cloudflare. You could put those directly into your router and have DNS uh, filtering there. Pi Hole just gives you that extra level of configuration. And all of these tools can be used really nicely together. So querying Google's DNS, you can see through Wireshark. If we're looking for twitter.com, you can see the request and you can see the request in plain text. So Google's DNS will respond, of course, with the IP addresses for Twitter, but it's uh, transmitted all in clear text. So Cloudflare's encrypted DNS uh, requires TLS handshakes between client computers and their DNS servers, making it a lot harder for people to snoop at what queries are being made. So I hope this explains a little bit more about how Pi-hole and Cloudflare can work together to give you DHCP services DNS resolution with ad blocking, telemetry blocking, malware blocking, adult content filtering, and custom DNS resolution on your network, both at home and in your office. We've all seen the Pi-hole setup and configuration videos about how to set up and configure the Pi. <laughs> all seen the pie hole. Pie hole also does telemetry stripping. Is that the right term? Blocking. Telemetry blocking. I should maybe make sure that this is actually true. Plink, 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 plink.